In this video, I'm going to teach you about and talk about arrays. Okay, so what is an array? Well, to put it lightly or easily, uh, an array is a collection of data ordered by indexes. Okay, it's one of three collection types, I believe three collection types in Swift, which is arrays, self and dictionary. For, forget that, just remember that it's a collection of data ordered by indexes. That is an array. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you've got a few, I don't know, variables or maybe you've got 50 integers and you want them to all be in one place uh, without assigning them to variables, right? Well, you can put them into an array because it's a collection of data, right? And I'll show you how now. Okay, there's, there's two ways. You can put variables into arrays and you can put raw values into arrays. Let's go. Let's make our, uh, our, our variables. So we'll say a is equal to 1, variable a1, uh, a2, sorry, is equal to 99, and variable a3 is equal to 192. All right? Random values, you know, they don't mean anything to me. They're kind of irrelevant. Now let's say we want to make an array, i.e. a collection of, uh, oops, that needs to be a3 like that. We want to make a collection of these variables. So I'm going to make an array called variable b. And in order to make an array, uh, you actually have to use square brackets. So these brackets here, opening and closing square brackets. Inside of these square brackets, when we declare an array, or we first create an array, we want to put our values. These can be actual values or variables. So for example, I can put variable A as the first item in the array. I can put A2 or I can put A3. Okay, quite simple. Let's print it out. Let's see how it goes. So you can see here, I've got one, 99 and 192. So all of these items, they're all in the same place now. So let's imagine I had a thousand items and I wanted to put them all in the same place. Well, I could, and it might be a more convenient data format, right? Similarly, I can put raw values into here. So I can put 22, uh, 81, 12, okay? Whatever, it doesn't matter the actual values, it's more that we can put them in there, yeah? Print that out, and you'll see that's worked. Great, you must be thinking, well, you know, I actually think we should make, uh, I don't know, maybe a combination. Maybe we'll put 33, uh, we'll put a string like hello, and we'll put a boolean of value true. We'll put them all into the same variable. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, and then we'll print it out. Yeah, let's run that. Let's see how that goes. Oops, what happened there? So, there are some limitations with arrays. Arrays cannot contain more than one data type. So, you see this array here, it contains three different ta data types, okay? It is what is known as heterogeneous, but you are not allowed to have het heterogeneous um, arrays. You are not allowed to have arrays that have more than one data type in them. They all, all the data types inside of an array must be of the, all the same. So for example, I can't have these, you know, three data types together, but I can have them separately. So you can already see above that I'm allowed to put integers into um, an array. Let's say variable before is equal to hello, and then the second item will be unpredictably world, right? And we print that out. So you can see that that's worked. And the problem isn't that I can only put integer data types into an array. It's that an array has to contain all this. Every item in the array has to be the same data type, right? So there's a limitation there. So whilst you can, you know, use a variable 
or you can use a raw value and you can put as many of these values or variables as you can as you want into an array you cannot mix data types within an array all right so that is a limitation of the array you're thinking okay not a big deal not a big deal i can get over that great so arrays might be useful to you if you can accept the fact that you can't mix data types on to the next thing i said that an array is a collection of data ordered by indexes so you can see that obviously it's a collection of data this one's a collection of three integers this one is also a collection of three integers and this one is a collection of two uh, strings right what do i mean when i say ordered by indexes right well, you can see that these 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 arrays are in order. You know, the item, the first item I put in is the first item there. 99 is there as the second item because the second item I put in. 192 is the third item. So it's ordered in a sense, right? It's actually ordered by what's called an index. Okay, and an index for some reason. Now, as a human, you would think that a because it's the first item would be index one, a two would be index two, and a three would be index three. But actually, an index starts at zero, and then it progresses by one for each new item. So an index starts at zero, and then it ends at the last item at minus one. So inside of this array, for example, we have three items, okay? So the last item minus one would be the third item. So the index of the third item would be two because it's the last item minus one is the last index and the first index is zero, okay? So the last item minus one is the last index number and the first index number is zero. I don't know why they decided to um, start indexes at zero in programming languages, but you know, it's the choice they made. So here, once again, the index is 0, 1, and 2. So for every item, it's item number 1. The index is the item number minus 1. So item number 1 is index 0. Item number 2 is at index 1. Item number 3 is at index 2. Right? And it, the same runs true here. I'll just put index here, just so you can have a little look at it. So we've got 0. I'll put that in the middle there. We've got zero, and then we've got one here. Yeah. So when we say that they're ordered by indexes, that's what we mean by that. Okay. Now you must be thinking, oh, okay, I'm not stupid. I understand that these arrays are ordered by indexes. Fine. Great. Well. How do I get the items from inside of the array? All you've shown me is how to print the array. You've shown me how to use the whole array, but I want the item at index one. I want the item at index two. You know, I want this worst word here world. That's what I want. Not a problem. So let's say I want to print the value world, right? Which is at index one. Yeah. So I would print first of all the array name and then in order to access this item i put a bunch i put out some some square brackets and then inside of those square brackets i insert the index number so i'm saying i want from b4 index 1 which is world and when i go to print that out you'll see that it prints out world here I can do the same, for example, for B2, and I can get index two, oops, index two, and that should print out value 12. And there we are, okay? So that's how we can access indexes. Um, we can actually change the uh, values of these indexes um, by using, again, by accessing the index, so we say B4, Two, for example, uh, one. No, B two. Yes, B four. Sorry, B four one. Ah, can't make my mind up which I want, which is this world here, right? And at the moment, B four is 
like this, hello world. I want this world value to instead be universe and capital letters with an exclamation mark, right? So all I've got to do is say inside of B4 at index one, I want the value to be equal to this and that will overwrite this value, okay? So if I print B4 again, you'll actually see that it'll say hello universe in a sense, right? Here we are. So I'll have a look at that. Hello universe. So you can see that I've reassigned the value at index one um, with the value universe, okay? So that's how you access uh, items in an array. Similarly, for example, let's say I wanted to use the item in uh, B2. Let's say I want to use 22, for example, and I want to add to it, I don't know, 109. Well, I just access that value and I add 109 to that value. And I print that. Okay. When I go to print B2, you'll notice that B2 hasn't actually changed. I'll explain why. Explain why, right? When we access this item here, we're just printing the value of that plus the value of that. We're not actually modifying this value. We haven't assigned a new value to B2 index 0. We're just getting its value here and then adding 109 to it and then printing that value out here. Right? So just understand that you know it's not some kind of trickery not some kind of crazy magic right now let's say i want to i don't know print out every single item in index b for whatever reason but i don't want to you know have to say print b b index zero plus b index one plus i want to just print you know every single one out line by line right I guess I could probably do that in a for loop, but how do I do that? So we'll say for counter in, and we'll use the range as the index number, the lower index number for the lower bound, so zero. And then the upper bound will be the um, largest, the last index number, which is two here, right? Because, yeah, that's just how it'll work. And then we print b counter because counter will be equal to you know whatever number is within this bound range here so the first time it'll be equal to zero so we'll say index zero we print index zero of b then it'll be equal to one and then we'll say print index one of b that'll be equal to two and we'll say print index two of b right. let's test it out so what were the values of b again they were 199 and 192. Let's see if that prints that out. Oh, it's printed something. 199 and 192. So that is one way to actually print out uh, yeah, a bunch of items. Now let's say you've got an array. You don't know how many items are in it, you know? So you can't do this because you don't know how many items are in it but you want to print every single item out. Well, there's other ways of doing that, so don't worry so much, okay? Relax a little bit. There's ways and means. There's always ways and means. Relax, okay? So, there's two ways we can do this, right? So let's say we've got B4, yeah? We can actually get B4.count. Oh, yeah, dot .count, not dot .cu. Yeah. And if we print this value out, it'll give us the count of B4. Okay. So that tells how many items there are in B4. Now, the count minus one is the last index in, uh, in any array. So if you get the count of the array and subtract one from the value, you'll get the final index. And then obviously the first item is at index zero. So, for example, if we wanted to, you know, print every item in B4, we'd just say for counter in zero dot dot 
count minus one. So what's count minus one, one? Okay. I think actually, and I'm going to try it now, we can actually have b4 dot count minus one. Oh no, that doesn't work currently. Okay, never mind. So we'll just use a count of one. So we get the count first and then we subtract one from it. And then we print b4 counter. Okay, so that's one way that we can get all the values, you know, from the hello universe. So we printed a both out. Is there another way we can do this? Is there another way? No. Or is this some crazy voodoo science that I'm using here? Yes, there's another way. There's actually a way of using a for loop um, in order to get every item inside of an array. And it's for item. Now remember, these words here are just words to hold a value. So when you're using this range value here, counter is just equal to whatever iteration you're in with the range value you've given. So counter here will be equal to zero. The next one will be equal to one, blah, blah, blah. But here, when we use for item in array, and the, the array we want here is going to be B2, for example, right? We just print item right now when we use this instead of getting a value of you know a range value for each iteration within the range what we actually get here is this is equal to the value of the item in the array so it starts at the very first item in the array which is zero and it gives you the value of that item and then it keeps looping for every single item in the array in order so from the first index to the to from index zero to index one to index two, and it keeps on going in that order until the loop ends. So here we get the first item, the second item, third item, so on and so on until we printed all the items. All right, just have a look at the values of B2 now. So 22, 81, and 12. Run that and print it out. 22, 81, and 12. So that's another way that we can get, you know, all the values of items um, inside of an array using a for loop, right? Now, there's a few things I want to talk about. One of them is these homogeneous um, arrays here, right? We can make empty arrays. I don't know if you knew this, but you do now. You can make empty arrays, okay? And we're going to say, we're going to make one, and we're going to say variable c equals empty array all right but when we run this when we run this it doesn't work okay and the reason why it doesn't work is because we need to specify what data type we want to put into it okay so i'm just going to comment that out and so what we have to do is we put variable c is equal to we use once again these square brackets and inside the square brackets we put the data type we want to use after that, we put some curly brackets, open and close and curly brackets, right? So I'll run that, and if there's no error, we should be all good. There we go. So that has worked, okay? Now, this is an empty array, okay? I'll print it out. I'll print it out. I'll show you. This is an empty array, right? It's just some square brackets right now. What if you want to add some items? So let's say, I don't know, I want to add the item lovely okay there's two ways to add items i'll show you them both now uh, there's only one way to take away items as well to remove them so we can add them just by using the variable name and we can use add equals which is a way of adding something to a variable and we just put the value that we want to add so here i'll put alligator it doesn't really matter what string i use just this is just examples. And the other way I can do this is by using the array and put a dot notation, dot remove, uh, sorry, dot append. Well, I've shown you how to add <laughs> to get rid of items. And we put inside of these brackets here, the curly brackets of the append argument, the item we want to add. So here I'll put alligator, so I'll put kangaroo you know we'll go with an animal thing right and i'll print c out a second time 
and you'll see the difference. You'll see that it should contain alligator and kangaroo, right? What? What? Ah, yes, sorry. I have to put that in square brackets. So when you're adding by this method, I don't know why we have to add, add them in square brackets. Very sorry about that. In fact, what I'll do, you know, what I'll do is I'll actually add another item just to get rid of the confusion. So we add our item with this and we've got to use square brackets. Remember to use square brackets. Don't mess it up like I did. Right. And I'm going to put dinosaur. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I just think it'd be a nice little thing to put into my array. Right, I'll run this and you should see the values alligator, kangaroo and dinosaur in the array printed out. And there you are. And that's your proof that both of these methods will add a value to your um, array, whether it be empty or not, this will work. Now, you must be thinking, great, let's get rid of the items. Well, how do you do that? Well, I imagine you just use C minus equals, you know, because that's the opposite of what we did, and just put in your argument here. So we'll say alligator. Yeah, that should work. Why not? Let's run that. What? It didn't work. I don't know why this doesn't work because, you know, you look at it logically and you feel like it should, but it doesn't. So, you know, don't let that trick you. That will not work. What you have to do is you use C dot remove. And then you say at an alligator. If you actually look here would be at index zero. Okay, and then we print C just to have a look. So this remove at what it does is you put inside the curly brackets the at um, a colon, and then you put the index value you want to remove. So alligator here is actually index zero. So if we remove at zero, we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of alligator. That's really annoying. That get rid of alligator like that. So that's how you remove things. Okay, simple enough. That's pretty much all there is to it, you know. I'll go over everything again, because I want to make sure for me, I haven't missed anything out, you know, I'm really tired, I'm not thinking. The other thing I want to make sure is that you guys understand. So here I've assigned all these variables, and here I've assigned this array, this variable here, and inside the array I've put all these variables. And that worked. If we go through the print statements, you can see that works. Because when I print it out, it has all those values, right? And the second one with B2, I show that you don't actually have to add variables. You can just add the raw values, okay? And when I printed it out, yeah, that worked. That was fine. Here, what I tried to demonstrate was that you cannot use multiple data types in the same array. An array must contain only the same data types, all the same data types. It can have as many ints as it wants in it, as long as they're all ints, as long as all the data inside of it is an int, or it could have as many strings as it wants, as long as there's no other data types, okay? You can only use one data type in an array. You can use it many, many values, but only one data type, right? Here, I was saying that an array is a collection of data ordered by indexes, right? And this here shows that. So, you know, indexes start at zero and they end at whatever the length of the array is or however many items there are in the array minus one. The first item minus one is the index value. So whatever the item number is, that minus one will be the index value. So this is the first item. So the index value will be zero because one minus one is zero. This is the second item. Two minus one is one. So the index number will be one. Okay. This will reign true for any, uh, any array that you want to make. Okay. Here I've shown that you can access uh, the value of an item in an array by using the array name and then square brackets after it, and inside those square brackets, the index it the index of the item you want to uh, get the value of. Okay. Note that this doesn't change 
the value. We're not reassigning, we're not manipulating the value, we're just getting the value here. And here we're getting the value and we're reassigning it here. So you get the value of, you know, of the uh, item at index 1 of array B4, which is world, and then we're reassigning it the value universe. And you can see that because when we print B4, we get hello world. And when we print, you know, B41, we can see the individual items there. But then when I reassign the value here, you can see that it's now been reassigned, right? Same here, this is just reiterating that, you know, you're not actually changing B2, 0, the item at index 0 of B2 here. You're just taking its value and adding another value to it, but you aren't changing it. You can only change it uh, by this method. Well, there's other methods as well, but, you know, in general, that's the only way. Demonstration of how to do uh, the regular for loop um, by using the index number, the first index number, which is always zero, and the last index number of the array, which in this case is two. If you don't know um, the final index number because maybe you've got a large array or it's someone else's code, you can get the count of an array, and that number minus one will be the last index number of that array. So for B4, that was 2, as is demonstrated here, I believe. And we printed out every item, hello universe, and it worked. You can also just um, say for item in array, but this will not give you a range value, will not give you the value of the item you're in within the loop, um, uh, sorry, the, the, the count value. This will give you the actual value of the item uh, starting from the first item in the array to the last, going through sequentially to the last item in the array, right? And here I try to assign, uh, well, assign an empty array to the variable C, but because, you know, arrays can only contain one data type, if you don't specify the data type, they'll give you an error, which is why this is commented out. Here, with variable C, I've showed you how to actually uh, make an empty um, array. And you have to declare the data type you want within the brackets here. And then you use these curly brackets after you've made the declaration. Here, I've showed you how to add values to an array. Now, remember, because I messed it up, because I just, just find it so hard to get used to these arrays and Swift. Basically, you can use the plus equals here, and then you use the curly brackets. Remember to use these curly brackets, and inside these curly brackets, you put the value you want to add to the array, and that's how you add an item to an array. That's one of the two ways. See, I've done it here. That's one of the two ways. You can also use the dot append, and inside the curly brackets, you put in the value you want to add, and that will also allow you to add items to an array. And then, you know, if you want to remove an item from an array, you can just use the array name, which is C in this case, dot remove. And you have to use this argument here. You have to use the word at followed by a colon, uh, followed by a space. I think you need a space. I'm not sure. And then, you know, the number. And the number that you're using there is the, I, the index number of the item you want to remove. Right? And you'll remove that item at the index number specified here. This here is like the opposite logic to this here, but it doesn't work, okay? So do not be cheated by that. And that is pretty much it, you know? There's not really much more to arrays. There's some complicated things you can do with arrays, but as this is a basics video, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching.